Assalamu alaikum, dear students. Hope you are well. I am Mohammed Samad Khan, lecturer, Department of Accounting, Dhaka College, Dhaka. I am going to take the second class on the theory of capital structure. It is a topic on the theory of capital structure. The course name is Corporate Finance and Financial Management. Okay, today we discuss the topic is an I approach. And I approach. The students, we already known that and I approach and and NOI approach was introduced by David Doran in 1952 okay so according to this approach According to this approach, capital structure decision is relevant to valuation of the firm okay it i think according to this approach capital structure decision is relevant to the valuation of the firm it means that a change in Financial leverage a change in financial leverage will change a corresponding corresponding will change a corresponding I mean will correspond corresponding change or will change a corresponding between the weighted average cost of capital and the value of the firm and equity shares okay i think a when a change occurs in financial leverage then automatically lead a change automatically lead or automatically happen the change in the weighted average cost of capital and the valuation of the firm or uh, equity shares okay i think uh, all of you already uh, understand this what i want to say because when leverage or debt i think when leverage or debt leverage is increase then share price the price of the share market price of the share and the value of the firm will increase okay i will discuss it later okay the students
let's see the diagram say it is a diagram ox and oy okay it is called leverage or leverage degree I think it is called cost of equity say it is called cost of debt line it is cost of overall cost of capital okay the students here what we see here we see that according to this approach according to the ni approach what we see we see that if if leverage will increase then weighted average or cost of capital i think it is cost of capital line cost of capital line okay okay it is y exists it is ox exists here according to this ni approach if leverage will increase or leverage increases then the weighted average or cost of capital cost of capital decrease and if leverage decreases if leverage decreases then cost of capital increase cost of capital increase and value of the firm value of the firm decrease share price also decrease so here we can say here we can say that if you see in this structure okay then if we use leverage or or if we uh, increases the leverage then cost of capital decreases cost of capital decreases okay and value of the firm increases but if the leverage decreases then cost of capital increases what you see in zero that if a uh, leverage is zero or leverage decreases then cost of capital so we already realized that from this graph that uh, if we increase the leverage then uh, already overall cost of weighted average cost of capital decreases and value of the firm and the market value of the uh, price of the shares will increase and then similarly if leverage uh, decreases then overall cost of capital increases or weighted average cost of capital increases and the value of the firm and cost of uh, equity or a value of the common stock uh, decreases okay at present we learn that what are the assumptions of ni approach okay the students let's see 
which are the assumptions of the NI approach. Assumptions. First one is there are two sources. One is common stock and another is debt or debenture. Two here cost of equity and cost of debt is are constant. Okay? Then three E B I T earning before income interest and tax or NOI which is called X bar is constant okay then four one is always cost of equity is greater than carry cost of debt always greater than okay then five use of leverage Can't change or don't do not change the risk perception of shareholders. Here, six one is here corporate. Tax doesn't exist. Okay, so here we already seen the six uh, assumptions. There are six assumptions of NI approach. Okay, so first one is there is two sources, two financial sources. One is common stock, and second one is or another is cost or sorry or another is debt or debenture. Okay, we collect money uh, from two sources. Is one is common stock and second one is debt. Two cost of equity and cost of debt are uh, are always constant here are always constant. Okay, three EVIT or expected or earning before interest and tax or NOI net operating income or X bar is constant okay then here is uh, KE is greater than KD I mean cost of equity always greater than cost of debt cost of equity is always greater than cost of debt five number use of leverage don't change the risk perception of shareholders it is simple uh, we already uh, seen this six here corporate uh, tax here corporate tax doesn't exist okay corporate tax uh, doesn't exist or do not exist whatever say please dear students from this assumption uh, we see this that uh, there are many limitations or criticisms of uh, this and I approach 
David Durant himself criticize this approach. Already, David Doran, uh, who is who is uh, introducer of this approach, uh, David Doran uh, already himself criticized this approach because here there is only two financial sources. It is only one of them. Uh, criticism or critics is only one of them. Then here cost of equity and cost of debt are constant okay then here always cost of equity is greater than cost of debt and another point is here already says in the assumption corporate tax do not exist but uh, in our country government impose that taxes another taxes so it is the uh, restriction of NI approach but in the NI approach we already uh, told this that corporate tax do not exist but our government imposes taxes in many ways okay please dear students we uh, learned uh, a math or, or learned the math procedures previous class I think uh, just at present I tell this say say overall cost of capital overall cost of capital equal what it is we already learned that kd into d by v plus ke into e by v okay we also learned this ke equal earning e by okay so over okay cost of equity equal e by p uh, where p equal price of equity share e earning or it is say n i divided s or n o i minus r divided s s or p i mean uh, s market bill of shares s here s is market bill of shares okay so and then cost of debt equal we already uh, uh, learned this that kd equal r by d kd equal r by d here r equal interest total interest okay so we already learned this how we bring the cost of equity cost of debt and over cost of capital over cost of uh, capital we n o i by v or x bar by v okay so we learn this okay please dear students i write a question in the board that say the expected income EVIT I mean earning before interest and tax or NY is one lakh fifty thousand taka. I think the expected income of any one company, any company, I mean ABC company, okay? Okay, it has 10% debt of Taka 5 lakh, okay? 
and its cost of equity is cost of equity is 15% whatever okay so let's we should uh, bring out from this question say I mean one is value of the share value of the shares to total value of the firm and G is overall cost of capital we we bring out the three from this question okay let's see value of shares i mean here what is what is the s Okay, value of the shares. Okay, say cost of equity equal NOI minus R. Divided S. or okay we uh, bring this from the this rules noi i mean ny is 1 lakh 50 thousand taka and then r is what is r i mean r is five uh, ten percent of uh five, five lakh i mean fifty thousand taka Okay, divided S. Where is K is fifteen percent? I mean, one point five. Okay. So one lakh. Then divided S equal point one five. Okay. So implies that. So. S equal one lakh divided point one five. So one lakh divided point one five, then uh, the amount is six lakh sixty six thousand six hundred sixty seven is uh, it is. A market bill of shares it is market bill of shares okay so here I mean total bill of the firm okay total bill of the firm equal total bill of the firm I mean B say B total bill of the firm B equal S market bill of shares plus D the debt D is that okay so shares market bill of shares then 5 lakh which is 5 lakh Okay, then it is eleven lakh sixty six thousand six hundred sixty seven taka. It is below. Okay, then we should bring out the overall cost of capital. Okay, I please I erase this please. Overall cost of capital Ko equal NOI divided B. 
So here M O I equal it is then uh, the value of the firm is like that. So So it is 12.86%. Okay, it is, we may bring out it is another way, which is, we know that overall cost of capital equal, overall cost of equal KD into D by V plus K into E, E by V or uh, S by V. So here KD is, sorry, KD is 10%. Then V plus K is fifteen percent K is fifteen percent into I mean earning S equal divided such okay it is 0 0.10 into 5 lakh divided zero four three say four three okay and then Zero point zero eight five seven. Okay, here point zero and eight six percent. Okay, so the students, I hope that all of you will solve this math uh, in your home and stay home, stay safe. Thank you.